Hello again, everyone, and welcome back. I uh, hope you enjoyed my last uh, few releases. Now, you may be looking at this and saying, well, you usually talk about books, and uh, I usually do. And this will we'll get into a book. Uh, anyway, um, you're looking at Willow the, the, from the movie. Um, back in 1998, <clears throat> uh, George Lucas uh, released a movie called Willow. It was directed by Ron Howard, um, starring Warwick Davis, Val Kilmer, and uh, Joanne Wally, among others. I think that's how you say her name. Could be wrong. Anyway, um, that being said, why would I bring this up now? Well, the reason I'm bringing this up now is because of Willow 2. Uh, let me There we go. There's Warwick Davis reprising his role as Willow. Um, this is a, going to be a new series that is released on um, <clears throat> Disney Plus in November. Again, why am I talking about this? Well, uh, I remember watching Willow when it first came out. Um, I am somewhat ashamed to say that for a while I hated the movie. Um, the reason being not because of anything they did in the movie uh, or the story or anything like that is because of my my brothers uh, they watched it on repeat over and over I started hating uh, Disney's Little Mermaid for the same reason but because of my sister um, anyway uh, I was able to finally you know get away from Willow for a while my brothers found something else that they became obsessed with and then later, uh, one of my roommates in college mentioned Willow. And I said, well, we have that movie at home. He's like, oh, can you bring it? And I said, sure, why not? So one weekend I went home, came back, brought Willow with me. Um, we watched it. And I'm like, okay. Um, at this point, having not watched it for years, uh, I was able to then watch it and enjoy it. And I do enjoy it now. The, it's fun. It's adventurous. Uh, Val Kilmer is awesome in it. Uh, Warwick Davis does an, uh, an amazing job. Um, <clears throat> I love the the brownies, uh, Rule and Frangine. Uh, uh, Rule being my favorite, I think. Uh, anyway, long story short, the reason that I'm bringing this up is because what a lot of people don't realize is that George Lucas already released a sequel to Willow. Yeah, uh, if you didn't um, know this, uh, I, I'm not surprised. Uh, the thing is, is that it wasn't really advertised as far as I could tell. It was it was pretty low key. The thing is, is that it was released as a book. Um, you see right there, it says an all new saga based on the movie Willow. This was a collaborative project between George Lucas and Chris Claremont. If you're unfamiliar with Chris Claremont, um, he used to write for the X-Men, for Marvel, for the X-Men franchise. Yeah. Um, he's done a lot of other stuff as well, but uh, I think his X-Men stuff may have been, his comic book stuff may have been the, the most well-known stuff that, that he has done. So this book, <clears throat> Shadow Moon, happens... Um, 11 years after uh, Willow saved um, Laura Dannon from Bav Morda. So basically after 11 years after what happened in the in the uh, in Willow the movie. Um, <clears throat> in the movie, uh, Willow has to gets involved with the plot to save the princess uh, Laura Dannon from from uh, the evil sorceress Bav Morda. Uh, in Shadow Moon, uh, Willow is with his family, and he's lamenting the fact that he can't be with Laura on her birthday. Uh, and uh, he falls asleep, and he actually wakes up in in the palace, and uh, he gives a teddy bear to Laura, um, and then wakes up back home. Now he told her that the teddy bear would protect her, and when he wakes up, he finds out that a cataclysm has basically wiped 
the castle, Tir Eslim, where uh, Laura Dannon and his friends were all um, partying uh, from the, the face of the, the world, uh, as, as well as uh, this same cataclysm striking in 11 other places. Uh, he then uh, leaves his home and goes wandering with uh, the brownies, Rule and Frangine, uh, <clears throat> to try to figure out what on earth happened. Now, uh, because of Willow's uh, gift to Alora Dannon, uh, it was a teddy bear that he had um, created and he had inspelled it to protect her. Because of that, she was protected from the cataclysm, and it actually teleported her away from Tiraz Lean to another kingdom. Um, so, in his investigation, uh, Alora Dannon is about to come of age, uh, and people from the kingdom where she ends up uh, come to find him, uh, to bring him to her coming of age ceremony. Um, at this point, he has uh, changed his name. He's now called Thorn Drumheller, and he's using that as his, his name instead of Willow. Um, <clears throat> the thing is, is that I, I remember reading the series. I remember enjoying it, and it's been a while since I have read the book. Um, <clears throat> but I do remember there being some rough patches in the, in the story where things didn't quite um, make sense. And actually, I looked at, <clears throat> before doing this video, I looked at a couple places online, and um, that was kind of the sentiment. Well written, but confusing in some places. <laughs> so uh, that's not just my assessment. Other people have had that assessment as well. The, as I said, um, it's interesting that George Lucas has already, writ uh, already released a sequel, and there's actually two more books in this series. Um, <clears throat> based on the movie Willow and what happens after Alora Dannon um, comes of age and how she grows into her abilities and what Willow does and <clears throat> a lot of uh, uh, basically a, a lot of that is her fulfilling her um, the prophecy around her birth where she is there to um, defeat evil and to um, uh, bring peace and balance and all that other stuff. Uh, again, that harks back to what originally happened in the, um, in the movie. So the movie, uh, the evil sorceress Bav Morda, she capture, or she basically takes prisoner all of the pregnant women in the hopes of when the prophesied child is born, she can kill it and she, she won't be, um, then destroyed by this uh, um, this baby, the the mother manages to get the baby smuggled out of the castle in the meantime, and because of that, uh, um, <clears throat> the whole sequence of events in Willow happens, uh, and then after that, in the continuation, uh, Alora is um, she was prophesied to be um, a savior, destroyer of evil, that kind of thing. And so this is the culmination of her growing into that birthright that was given to her. Um, again, uh, interesting that there is this uh, little known sequel to Willow. Um, I don't know how many movies, I'd have to look it up, I don't know how many movies actually made it into production as a movie and then later were uh, were given sequels in in book form I know that there are some books out there that were made into movies and that that had sequels in book form that were never made into into movies but I don't know how don't know off like, like I said I can't say off the top of my head it could be that there's tons of, of uh, movies like that but um, Willow uh, was actually did fairly well. Uh, the, uh, the movie was uh, released, like I said, in 1988, and it made uh, uh, $137.6 million, uh, and it was uh, 
created on a $35 million, million dollar budget. So it did make money. It just didn't make enough money to, to garner a sequel uh, as far as having it filmed goes. Now it's oh, how many years later, and we're getting a sequel to Willow in the form of um, this Disney Plus series. So it will be interesting to see what tack they're taking with this sequel as opposed to what was written in the books. Um, one of the unfortunate things about uh, the, the books, uh, as opposed to the movie, um, Val Kilmer's character, Mad Mardigan, in the movie it was one of the, in my, in my opinion, one of the draws of the movie. One of the things that made the movie really work was was Val Kilmer's character. He was uh, a likable rogue. Um, he had plenty of personality, and um, he had the sword skills to back it up. He called himself the greatest swordsman alive, and he... he yeah, sorry about that. He definitely demonstrated it in the movie. So... The thing is, is that if you're expecting to go watch Willow the movie and then maybe take a jaunt and read through this um, this follow-up sequel, you'll be disappointed that Mad Mardigan is not in uh, any of the books. Um, basically, the only characters that have come from uh, Willow the movie and made it into this book series that follows uh, follows along are Willow himself, the two brownies, and Alora Dannon. Everyone else, as I said, there was a cataclysm right at the beginning. They were all there at the castle of Tirasleen, which means they all died. So don't go in expecting to, to find a continuation of the adventures of these characters. They're not there. Which is, in my opinion, it was a detriment to the, the series itself. You fell in love with the characters watching the movie. You wanted to see that continuation of the characters as it got into um, um, the... Uh, the books here, and you wanted to find out what was happening, what was going on with them, and how they were were continuing that um, the adventures from the movie, and they're gone. So don't expect that. Uh, the writing is good; it's solid. Um, not one of the not one of the best um, fantasy novels I've ever read, but still good. Um, <clears throat> worth a read. I'm trying to think. I, I was having a train of thought there, but now it's gone. So anyway, <clears throat> as I said, it was it was an okay book, uh, worth a read. Uh, I actually start. I, I actually have the first two in the series. That's kind of what I mean. It was worth a read, um, but I haven't been back, and I and I have read the whole series. I just haven't picked up the third book because. Once again, it was good. It was just maybe not good enough for me to read again. <clears throat> so while I still have them, and maybe plan to pick them up again someday, I haven't finished collecting the whole series. So that being said, worth a read. Maybe not worth collecting. See if your library has it. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I do read them. I do try to respond. And uh, like and subscribe as always. And until next time, uh, have fun.